What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and you might be wondering why I'm wearing this ridiculous wristband. It's because it is very hot in my studio right now. We came in this morning and the AC wasn't working. We had a massive heat wave come through California the other day. I saw a max of 126 degrees freedom units, which is like 52 C. Right now in my studio, it's cooled off a bit since the weekend, but it's still 86 degrees freedom units, which actually works out to exactly 30 degrees Celsius. So we've changed our video today specifically to see how much water cooling actually helps in a hot environment. We've already shown how water cooling in a very controlled uh, environment is very close to air cooling when the air cooler is actually built to a, a, a proper standard. But what happens now when you live in a hot climate and you don't have AC, we're gonna see exactly what that delta is now between air and water. Spoiler alert, the water is gonna be cooler. But just how much? With its adjustable PMW 3367 16,000 DPI optical sensor, four RGB zones, nine customizable buttons, and offering both wired and wireless operation are only a few reasons why the Corsair Dark Core RGB should be on your shortlist for your next mouse purchase. Check out its full list of features by clicking the link in the description below. So here's how this test is going to work. I'm actually using a 1080 Ti Poseidon from Asus, which is actually an air-cooled, I have to take the lid off, which is actually an air-cooled and a water-cooled GPU. You can just leave it as is and run the air cooler, or you can actually just plumb it up to uh, tubing like I have here, and the water block is built into it. Now, admittedly, the Poseidon is not 100% efficient or best at either air or water cooling, but it's good enough to get us a controlled result. If we took two different cards, one on air and one on water, even if they're identical cards, the Founders Edition cards, there is variance between cards, silicon lottery, and all that various mumbo jumbo and junk. So at least here we are using the same core, the same everything not being touched. And the way we're gonna run this test is I'm going to have the fans on the factory curve, and then we're gonna run the like a heaven benchmark and just let it loop, because it's, again, it's a controlled benchmark. We're gonna see what our max temperature is. Then we're gonna ramp the fans up to 100% and compare what our max temperature is, and that tells us what our max cooling capability would be in our current 30C environment and the cooler maxed out. Then we're gonna turn the fans off, and we're gonna turn on the water cooling pump and see how far it comes down. That is the way we are gonna be doing our test. So without further ado, I've gotta fill this loop and then we are going to obviously put up our uh, monitor and all that stuff. So, I don't know, maybe Phil can just do a quick little Philly montage. Filling, fill, a filling mon- Now let's talk about what we already expect to happen. We expect it to hit its target temperature, which in this case is 84C. That's factory. Once we hit 84C, the way GPU boost works is it's going, the closer it gets to that temperature, the more it's gonna start slowing down the core. And the way it keeps itself from exceeding that target temperature is it will slow down the core and the, bring down the voltage to try and keep it from going above that. We should not see above 84C unless we had this like, outdoors in the sun in a hundred plus degrees, then you might see it exceed that and then actually thermal shut down. So what we're gonna be looking here uh, for here, so what we're gonna be looking for today is how much core speed are we losing with air cooling in this hot ambient environment, which we are then going to compare with our water cooling. So without further ado, we're gonna run Heaven Benchmark. Now I know this is a synthetic benchmark. I am well aware of the fact that uh, games are probably a bit more stressful. The problem is it's very difficult to run an actual game and get a very consistent result because of the fact that you are free roaming and moving around the world and it's very hard to get consistency between tests. All right, so here we are in the 4K test in Heaven Benchmark. We are just chugging along in the 30s on FPS. We just hit 40 because uh, with that 8X MSAA, and 4K, that's a bit ridiculous, but we are now working this GPU for everything it's got. Um, point out though, it is running at 2000 megahertz, 100% load, 55C, 0% fan speed. You can see they're not turning because we are on the factory fan curve, which has that, up oh, there they go, which has that cool and quiet mode where it won't turn on the fans until it exceeds a certain temperature. At 58 is where it kicks on, and then this will speed up based on the factory curve. But what you're gonna notice is that's going to start dropping over time. So you see it fluctuating from 2000 now. The higher this gets towards 84, 
the lower this number is going to be. So what we're looking for here is how much speed do we lose in this 30C ambient temperature versus water. So we're going to go ahead and just let this roll until we find out where our, our level where it levels out. Then we're going to run the fans at 100%, level it out, and then switch to water. I know I explained that twice, but you know, sometimes you just got to. So about 15 minutes has gone by and we actually have an interesting discovery here. So we decided to turn on the power limit indicator so we could see when we're hitting power limit, which is why you're seeing it bounce on and off because every time we hit power limit, it will pop up on here and say power limit. Uh, because what we realized is we're not hitting 84C. We had expected to hit 84C, we're not hitting it. And yeah, I know it's really annoying watching it bounce around. Our uh, boost clock still came down from 2000 quite a bit, but we are still significantly overclocked on the self boost, uh, GP Boost 3.0. 100% CPU, 76% fan, 79C on the temperature. So what we decide we're gonna go ahead and do for the rest of this test is we are going to max out the power limit because it's set at its default 100, but these cards, especially the Poseidons, are designed for overclocking. So we are gonna go ahead and bump that to 100% so that we can see now, um, I guess, our differential between air and water. Now, obviously we know water is gonna be lower than this, but, and we had, obviously had to think about this decision because we don't want to manipulate the test in any way, but I don't think that that's gonna cause us any problems here. So all we're gonna do right here is we are gonna go ahead and take the power limit and the temp limit, which are linked, these are typically linked together, which our new temperature limit now is 90C and 120% or 20% above factory TDP is where we are setting our temperature and our power limit. That's what our limitation was. Before it was temperature, even in this hot environment, and before it was even uh, like core clock or any of that stuff, well, obviously core clock's related to temperature because it's a sliding scale. We actually just hit thermal limit, or we actually just hit power limit before thermals even became a problem. So what we're gonna see now is this will probably go up to 85-ish, but now we have to let it run for a little while longer here and see what happens. In fact, it might not even go any higher because we're surprised at just how beefy this air cooler is and how good of a job it's doing in this hot environment with factory curve. We didn't touch the fan curve at all. Okay, we're not getting any hotter. We're pretty much locked at ADC, 1949 megahertz. Ever since we raised the power limit, this has not changed. This went up a couple of degrees. In fact, it, it bounces between 80 and 79 now. Doesn't go any higher. Fan seems to capped out at about 79%. So what we're gonna do now is we are just going to bump this fan to 100. I don't expect the results to be that much different simply because of the fact that, hey, come on, because of the, let me do it because we're only getting about an extra 21% fan speed. So I don't think it's gonna make a major difference. So we're just gonna let it go for a couple of minutes. We did go up one degree Fahrenheit in here though. So it's gonna be like 30 and a half C now, something like that. We're gonna keep an eye on the temperature as best we can. As, we, as I said, the AC in here is not working, so I cannot control the environment as much. So as it heats up throughout the day, it's gonna get hotter in here. That's why we're trying to get this test done quickly. So we've settled at 72C, it's not changing. We only came up one step on our boost clock. You guys remember it moves in steps of 13. So we went from 1949 to 1962. Fans are still at 100%. This is actually pretty good considering the fact that we were almost 31C inside of here, inside this room. That's a, I expected it to be much hotter than that, obviously. I, I thought with a 1080 Ti and 250 watt TDP, more than that when overclocked, obviously, I thought it would be higher. But I wanna, I wanna show you guys something here. So obviously the system is filled with water. It's not running. The pump is not running. The fans, as you can see right here, have not been running. And I'm not gonna turn these fans on right now, but I wanna show you something here. If I flip on this pump, and just with the fact that the block and the heat sink are somewhat connected, the amount of passive cooling in a loop like this, as long as there is water flow, is pretty insane. So even with those fans on and these fans off, Watch what happens to the temperature the moment I click on this pump. Look how fast this will drop. So the pump is on, it is now moving. Look at that. Look at that temp right there. I haven't even turned on the radiator yet, folks. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in here and we are going to zero out the fan, keep our test running. With the fans off, the radiator off and just the pump going and passive cooling, just passive cooling through this radiator in this 31C environment, it's already down to 52C and holding back up to 2000 megahertz. Now it's pretty obvious once I plug in the radiator and get it flowing air that that's gonna come down significantly. We'll test how far that is and we'll talk about why that is. And this is kind of my rebuttal to some of the folks that were uh, upset that I said that air cooling and water cooling are closely matched. 
Um, in my last video, obviously there's limitations to that and that's exactly what we're talking about today. So stick around for the conclusion. Now that my fan is running and there's a lot of heat in that loop. Holy crap, there's a lot of heat coming through that radiator already. That's how much it had just soaked, just touching the system. Okay, so we're pretty much heat soaked. We're seeing 50C, we were seeing 51, it came down to 50 and there's 51 again. But we came all the way back up to 2012 megahertz. That is the max core clock that this graphics card will actually allow based on its P-states and its boost clock and all that. 0% fan speed, you know, Phil was right. He's like, put it back to auto, it'll go off because it's below that that speed thing. So again, feels smarter than me on that one. But we are 30C, about 31C lower than where we were on the fans on the factory curve and approximately 21C lower than where we were with the air cooling on a, at 100%. Now we are using a 240 millimeter radiator and there is a lot of heat coming out of here. The, the fluid temperature on this is definitely soaked. So we are fortunate that we are in a big enough space to where this is not affecting the overall temperature of the space. If you were in a small eight foot by eight foot bedroom or something, this would indeed get hotter over time. You might even see that get all the way up to 60 C if you're in a small bedroom. But the reason why you're seeing the results come down like this, even though we are in such a hot environment versus the previous test where we had a controlled 72 or 71 degrees Fahrenheit in this space is because of the efficiency and the efficacy of how water is able to pull air out or pull temperature out of already heat saturated air versus the efficiency of air cooling. Now, air cooling is obviously gonna get the job done. You saw this cooler had no problem getting it done. In fact, the water cooling loop here might put more heat into your room, making you less comfortable because of the fact that you are more efficiently pulling the heat directly from the die to this heat exchanger to the environment, AKA your gaming space. But I just wanted to kind of show here with this really hot, this hot room as our AC broke to kind of make lemonade out of Satan's ball sweat, basically to show you guys um, where water cooling really does indeed benefit you. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set the fans to 100% with the radiators on and the water cooling going to see if this number comes down below 50. I don't really anticipate that it will. If it does, it might only go one or two degrees, but um, that's it guys. Thanks for watching today's video. Hit this like button if you appreciate the fact that instead of walking in and just going home, which I legitimately considered doing and texting Phil and being like, hey, paid day off, it's hot. I bet you wish I did that, huh, Phil? Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you want to know more about the Poseidon cooler, I do have a review on this, and we compare it to the Founders card and all that stuff. I'll put a link in the description below. You guys can go and check out that review on this cooler. And as always, guys, we will see you in the next one. Hey, 48C. So obviously, when they work in conjunction, there is benefits to be had even in this temperature. Spoiler alert, though, we actually tested that when we did the card review, and I already knew that. I forgot something downstairs. Hold on. Be right back. I can't go any lower. Phil, you're not supposed to tilt the camera. If you want to learn more about the... <laughs>